Hi and welcome, my name is Scott Newman. In this session we are going to be discussing Juno Space. We're going to show you how to enable the ServiceNow and Service Insight applications. They come included with the network management platform. In other words, they're there when you do a base install of Juno Space. There's no additional licensing required for them, but they do require a valid support contract. So we have to go in and configure ServiceNow so that it'll communicate with with Juniper and uh, confirm your service contract. So we're going to show you how to do that here in this Learning Byte. If we take a look at the demo that we're going to be doing today, um, ServiceNow is running in demo mode, which means it's there, it's installed, it's available as an application, you can drop into it, you can do some configuration even, um, but it's limited to something like five devices and you can't submit any incidents or cases into JTAC when it's running in demo mode. So what we want to do is we want to um, submit our credentials for a valid support contract so that we can get out of the demo mode and use it in standard mode. And we'll talk about that. And then we also want to enable Service Insight. By default, Service Insight is installed, but it's completely disabled. So you can't even get into Service Insight and use it. So we'll show you how to enable that application as well. Now, I mentioned earlier that we have demo mode and standard mode for ServiceNow. It's important to understand that there are a couple different scenarios that you could configure ServiceNow. And when I talk about that, I'm meaning more like a topology and configuration where ServiceNow actually resides. Um, so we're going to be focusing on standard mode which is probably the most basic way you could set up ServiceNow. Um, but there are a few other deployment options that you could look at. Um, take a look at the user guides that are there on the Juniper support site, and they'll give you more information there. So if we take a look at this, we're running in standard mode. Um, the slide is a little bit busy because it's got uh, several customers here. But say, for example, your customer B, um, all of your devices that you're managing as well as the ServiceNow application are installed right there at the customer site. So any managing of incidents that takes place are going to occur at the customer B location. So we're not sending anything off to a middleman or a partner support site um, like, like is shown here in the slide. So let's switch over to the UI and we'll take a look at how it works. Okay, so we have Juno Space up and running. We're by default we the landing page here that we've uh, landed on is the network management platform. Okay, so um, you'll notice that this is just a very vanilla configuration. We haven't really done anything yet. We haven't even imported our devices at this point. We're going to switch right over to the ServiceNow application. So to do that, you'll notice here you have your little drop-down box. You can navigate between the different applications here. You'll notice that ServiceNow is available, so we can actually go into ServiceNow even though it's just in a demo mode. Um, even it's, so it's not completely enabled yet, but we can still do some configuration at this point. Notice that they, in this particular configuration, we also have the Network Director and Security Director applications. Those do not come included with the network management platform. You would require an additional license for those, and you'd also have to install those separately. Um, they're just they're just here on the on the kit that we're using today. So let's switch over to ServiceNow, and you notice it'll take just a few minutes to switch over, uh, particularly if you're doing it remote like I am. Um, so we just wait for that to, to refresh and you'll notice here that we're now in the ServiceNow application. The graphs are starting to load up um, but you'll notice when it comes up that there's not really anything there at this point. That's because we haven't configured anything. So for the most part when the tables come up here and momentarily they're just going to be blank on the dashboard here. But obviously they would start populating with data as you go in and configure it. So the key for this is to create what we call an organization. The organization is going to be how we tell the Juniper support system that we are who we say we are. And of course, if you were a service provider, you might be managing multiple organizations. And even within an enterprise, you might have several different subgroups. Um, but the organization is what we use to tell Juniper 
who we are. And we do that by basically submitting our credentials. Now what are those credentials? Well let's go ahead and take a look. So we're going to go under administration, we're going to go under organizations here, and by default there's not going to be any organizations listed. So we're going to click add organization, and the name doesn't really matter. You could call it whatever you want, so we'll just call it uh, ServiceNow demo. There are some limitations as far as what you can use in these fields. For example, characters like spaces and certain special characters won't work in this. Uh, so be cautious of that. The next step is to create the case as either a real case or a test case. So that means that whenever this any of the devices that are under this organization submit a case, they're going to either be test cases, in other words, they're just for pretend, they don't really matter, please close, or they're going to be real cases that JTAC needs to pay attention to. Both cases are real in a sense that they get created and sent to JTAC. So even if you create a test case, it's going to send that information to JTAC. But what it does is it flags the case as a test case and then the JTAC engineer can simply close it without really doing much follow-up. We're going to open this up as a test case obviously because we're not really, you know, this is all test uh, behavior. So we're going to put in an account and again the, the the field that you would use for the account is just going to depend on your own credentials. So uh, in other words, the credentials that you use to log into the Juniper site, that's what you would use here. Now this account that I'm using is a demo account. It's specific for test cases. Um, so you would use your own here. Now the next step I'm going to do is you might be prompted to click submit but there's actually a couple things that we need in order to create the organization. We need the username, the password, and then the third thing we need is the site ID. And you notice there's no field here for a site ID. So what you have to do is you have to actually click get sites. And now we're going to go out, we're going to ping Juniper, we're going to say here's my credentials, what is my site ID? And then Juniper is going to come back with a list of site IDs for you. Now I say list because there could potentially be more than one site ID associated with your username. You would think that most of the time there would just be one because you're usually just with one company but not all the time. Again if you're a service provider or in some cases just customer care makes mistakes and they have multiple profiles for you that's how you end up with multiple site IDs. So in this case we just have the one um, so we'll go ahead and choose it. <laughs> Again, you would probably never remember that number, so it's nice that you get to <laughs> just call it up here using the, the Get Sites option. And then another issue that you have uh, or concern that you might have when you submit a case is how much information do I want to actually send to JTAC, at least right away, because information like IP addresses, uh, usernames, log times, you, for some companies you can't send anything to attack or a, or a help desk uh, without prior approval. So you have to be very careful when you're selecting this option. By default we send everything but the IP addresses are overwritten. But you could say let's just not send anything. Let's send information except for the configuration. You could say let's who cares let's just send it all. Um, it'll help them solve the case faster whatever. Um, or you could say only send a list of the features used. Okay so this is all what's sent in what we call the Juniper message bundle, uh, which is basically a, a, a nice long file that has a ton of info in it. Um, so whenever an incident is created by a device, we send that information to JunoSpace in what we call the Juniper message bundle. So when you create an incident, that information is sent to JSS. So I'm going to go ahead and click Submit. Now what should happen at this point, and really it'll happen at the moment when you click Get Sites, is you'll get a, an error warning or an error message if it didn't work. If it did work, then you'll get the organization created successfully like we see here. Now why might it not work? Well, you think about it, it could be just a, an invalid username and password. It could be that you don't have access, internet access. Remember we need to actually make contact with Juniper here in this case, um, so that's a concern. It could be that your networking is not set up correctly. I only bring that up because that happened to me. I had, in this equipment that I was using, I had set up some funky routing rules 
and I, I didn't set it up quite right and so I had to go in and fix that before I was able to configure the the organization but in this case everything worked just fine we have the the name here we've got the connection status which is success now so what's happened now at this point is ServiceNow has switched from from demo mode to standard mode so we're, we're in production mode if you will at this point and you'll also notice if you hit down in your applications you have Service Insight also enabled. It used to be that Service Insight required an additional support plus contract um, but now they've included that in just the regular um, the, the same support contract that is required for ServiceNow so you get both applications enabled um, without paying extra for for additional support there which is great because Service Insight and ServiceNow are great tools they're gonna to help you a lot um, I could spend another 45 minutes going on and discussing both of these applications how you configure everything but we don't have enough time this is just a short learning bite so let me just bring up a, f a few of the highlights and hopefully that'll help you here your next steps are going to be to create your device groups these are groups where the devices reside so it could be you could you could match up all of your security devices in one group your wireless devices in another group maybe you do it based on region or based on office building um, and it's just a nice way to set up your group the groups because everything that you have within a group you can you could apply the same policies if you will to that group um, then you can go ahead and manage your scripts. The scripts are what we use to actually generate the events on the devices that create the incidents. So we create the event profiles that will install on the devices and that'll basically tell the device what script to use. And then finally we can also create auto submit policies. By default policies or I should say incidents are not automatically submitted to JTAC so if an incident occurs on a device it's not going to automatically fire off an incident but you might want it to if you for example you have a device that the power failed or you have an interface that went down um, maybe you want to get going on that right away I mean it's possible that you're asleep in the middle of the night when this, something like this happens so, to, so the ability to be able to create a case automatically um, is nice and you get at least one step ahead and then to have that information there it's, it does save some time so that's it for today um, if you're curious about learning more about ServiceNow and Service Insight um, or, and Juno Space as a whole we have a great course um, Juno Space Essentials it's a two-day course. You can take it in a classroom or online. Um, we have other courses specifically for enterprise and service provider uh, space users. Um, so we have four new days of training uh, that you could potentially take if you wanted to learn more. There's a lot of documentation on the Juniper website that's free, obviously, that you can get your hands on. And then here on the educational site, if you go to juniper.net forward slash training, you're going to find a lot of information there, too. Again, my name is Scott Newman. You can contact me at S Newman, that's S N E W M A N, at juniper.net if you have any feedback for this learning bite or anything else you'd like to see in future learning bites. Once again, thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.